Hey guys, welcome to the podcast today. And today I've got Chris Stafford and he is in the real estate industry, living in Panama in San Francisco, really embodies the lifestyle, financial location, time freedom. He's got an accounting degree and CPA, and he's the founder of The Agent Unleashed, which we'll talk about during the episode. And I'm really happy to have him on the show. Chris, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it, Chris. Yeah. So start off by talk, introducing yourself and we'll dive right into the conversation. Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned, I right out of college became a CPA working for PricewaterhouseCoopers. And I traveled all over the United States at various offers, uh, offices with them. And I landed in San Francisco. And that's when I decided that I hated my life as a CPA. And I wanted to be, I wanted to go into real estate, which really was my passion. And I've been selling, I still am selling as a listing agent in San Francisco for over 30 plus years. And about 10 years ago, I decided to start a coaching business called the Agent Unleashed. And so I coach real estate listing agents and I'm super, very passionate about that. And then about four years ago, I decided to move to Panama to bathe ourselves out of Panama, even though I still go back a lot to San Francisco, like every couple of months to meet clients and all that. Yeah, there you have it. Really interesting. And uh, San Francisco is a beautiful city, very dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So one thing, one thing that's on my mind is after the end, this kind of NAR settlement where real estate uh, agents mm -hmm. were cut in half. You're the first one on. So what is this? How does this impact you or how have you adapted or changed or shifted and uh, pivoted? The truth is I haven't really changed at all. You know, the bottom line is, is as real estate agents, commissions have always been negotiable. All right. Number one, I'm a listing agent. I really don't work with buyers. All the more reason I think this settlement is, makes it all the more important to be more of a listing agent than a buyer's agent because it can be a little bit more difficult as a buyer's agent. But I'm a listing agent, and so I basically haven't really changed all that much. And I'm coaching people, other real estate agents who are working with buyers, to just be upfront, be transparent, just tell your buyers this is the way it is, and that you'll make, you'll make sure that you negotiate to have your commission paid by the seller. So again, it really, aside from some forms that you have to get sellers to sign, my feeling has always been, as long as you're confident, and say it with a smile on your face, my clients are going to do whatever I say. <laughs> yeah. Which brings me to my next question is this idea I've always been interested. What is micro momentum marketing? What is that? Yeah. So micro momentum marketing is part of my coaching program. And one of the things that I have found when I talk to real estate agents, especially a lot of agents come to me and they don't really know how to get business. They don't know how to get listings to sell. And so what I help them do is I custom design marketing strategies for them. And I work with them, I hold their hand, work with them one-on-one -on -one to develop those strategies. And a lot of times people get really afraid. They are fearful. They're a little bit unsure of themselves as, as to what do you say to prospects? How do you find the prospects? How do you go about it? How do you create the strategy and all that kind of stuff? So micro momentum marketing is really all about taking baby steps in a nutshell is really what it is. So it's getting people to start new things. You can really use it in any era of your life, but it's the bill. It's getting people to start new ways of living, new strategies, in my case, new marketing strategies by taking one step at a time. So you circumvent the amygdala in the back of your brain, the fight or flight response. And it just gives you, once you start taking baby steps towards something is grist, you start getting more confident doing it and you get more, better at doing it and you want to do more of it. And that's essentially what micro momentum marketing is all about. Interesting. That's the, yeah. and I love this idea and being someone that's always innovating. The other question I have for you is in this current, in this year has been really tough for real estate. How has that affected you How kind of interest rates? And also what does, does a potential change in administration affect you or how will you position yourself for success in 2025? By number one, how I'll, I'll position myself by setting huge goals for myself, which I typically always do. So much of the external environment really affects us. And it's no surprise, I'm sure you, you get this. And that is, it's really all about mindset. 
it's really about not letting those external things get into your mind affecting you. Because if I say, oh, the presidential election is going to affect my sales or interest rates are going to affect my sales or pick one, guess what? They're going to affect your sale. But if you have really strong goals that you're really super excited about, and part of my coaching program, Chris, is to really help people really strengthen their mind and their body so that they have the mental and the physical fortitude to not worry about all those external factors. But no, I, so it's all about mindset for me. And it's all about setting huge, hairy goals. One of the things I like to say, Chris, is that I set goals every single year. I probably haven't achieved any of my goals in the last 30 years. All right. But I keep increasing at a failing rate, if that makes sense. <laughs> I love that. Because I, I need to get excited about my goals. If somebody says, they're making $50,000 selling real estate and they want to make $100,000. That's great. But to me, that's not very exciting. And so let's bump up the number and make it a more exciting goal and figure out how we're going to work backwards from there. Yeah. And I love this idea of uh, audacious, big setting goals. And um, yes. we'll, we'll dive into like mindset tools, one or two that you help agents maximize their performance and financial abundance. I think that what's interesting, what's really interesting about my program is that I don't have a one size fits all, a cookie cutter approach. I don't force people to do real estate agents to do anything that they don't want to do. What I love to do, what's really my passion is to work with them one-on-one -on -one and really get to know them well and find out, okay, what is it that you really are going to do for your mindset work? And so you, obviously there's so many things that you can definitely use between prayer, meditation, affirmations writing out your goals every single day. I think being physically fit is really important. It's hard to, it's hard to have a great mindset if you're eating junk food or you're drinking alcohol or you're not working out. So I think working out and being healthy is a huge part of mindset. But what I love to do is to craft or design those mindset techniques that are going to be really important to each particular person. You know, for me, it's like my meditation practice first thing in the morning and working out are the two things that I just, I almost couldn't live without. If I don't do them, you know, I'm, I just am going to have a really crazy day and I'm not going to be at my peak performance, if you will. Yeah. I love that. You know, talking to the top entrepreneurs, they're doing what you're doing. The next question I have for you is how do you balance your mindset? Because the mindset is one thing, but you also have to have strategies like marketing and sales. How do you balance those two? That's a really good question, Chris. No one's ever asked me that. I think it's important that you always do the mindset work first. Uh, the very first thing that I do as soon as I get up is I am doing my manifestation techniques, doing my meditation. I like to spend at least 20 to 30 minutes in the morning, every single morning, learning something. There's a great platform called Mind Valley there that has a lot of amazing programs out there. I just finished a program called The Art of Manifestation, which is an amazing program out there. But the bottom line is I think that you really have to you have a tight schedule. Do your mindset work first thing in the morning and then go right into the marketing after you work out and have a healthy breakfast and, and block time. Use block time to do the different types of marketing that you're going to do. For me personally, it's in the morning. I'm like on I'm almost 95% of the time I'm on point on schedule in the morning. My afternoons all are crazy. <laughs> I'm totally off schedule in the afternoons because that's the time I talk to clients and deal with contracts, negotiating, all that kind of good stuff. But get it done early, first thing in the morning. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Another good yes, he did the same thing as you. Like he basically got three working days in one by waking up at four and working like a couple hours and then he'll do like day, like the word normal and then like at night. So he gets like, three to one, basically. You know, it's interesting when you say that because I just, I was talking to another coach and in, in not in real estate and in different things. And one of the things that I think that it's really important to note that I, that everybody's different. There's, it's really popular nowadays to say, okay, get up at four o'clock in the morning and take an ice cold plunge bath and do this and do that. I know for a fact from personal experience that if you're not a morning person, I'm dealing with a, a real estate agent right now on the East Coast and struggling with his getting up on time, getting up early and all that kind of stuff. If I told him to get, <laughs> if I told him to get up at four and get in an ice plunge bath, he probably told me to what? 
So you have to work within the parameters of each person's personality, habits, their environment. Do they have children or not? All that kind of stuff. And that's what I really enjoy doing as part of the coaching thing is really taking each person's personal stuff into account. Because I, I get up at zero dark 32, but I just do it naturally. I've always been a very more early morning person, but I can't force everybody else to do that. For, I, what I, I've always been fascinated with um, agents like real estate. It's like a, admiring their hustle and their drive and their work ethic. And it's, it's always mm -hmm. selling. Um, for yeah. those wanting to break in and succeed in high-end real estate market, um, what strategies can you recommend for getting started? And Specifically for the high-end market, but really nowadays it's for any market, any type of level that you want to be in. If you want to be good in sales, for me, there's no doubt about it. It's all about relationship selling. Belly to belly marketing is really the best way. As Chris, people are going to do business with you based on whether they know and trust you. And I think that being the hardcore sales, trying to close people and using hardcore sales tactics, that's so 1980s, so 1990s. Now, nowadays, I think it's really super important to really uh, cultivate your relationships with clients, uh, even before they start. And here's the biggest thing I'll tell you is I have a, a listing technique that I usually get sellers to sign a listing agreement within 30 minutes because I give them a lot of information up front before I even meet with them. So that when I do meet with them, it's really all about building rapport. And that's really the most important thing. I'm spending all my time really asking them questions, understanding what are their fears, their insecurities, what are their dreams and their goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And I think that's really, it's vitally important. I think that you really try to build that rapport because I like to quote Maya Lou Angelou, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but basically people, people, sellers, especially, they don't care if you're wearing a $5,000 suit or driving your Mercedes Benz or I'm number one, I'm number one. They don't care about that. The bottom line is they're going to care about how you made them feel. And the more questions you can ask them, the more rapport you can build with them, that's what's really important. Mm, yeah. What I know because you help clients just brief general overview, big mistakes listing agents make and how they can avoid pitfalls. Not building rapport. Number one, that's, I think the biggest thing is not building rapport. I think the other thing is lack of consistency. The biggest thing that I'm trying to do with my coaching program, I have a real strong accountability program where I hold them accountable to what they say they're going to do. I would say that the biggest thing is in any sales, in anything you're trying to accomplish, if you go to, if you're not consistent about going to the gym, you're not going to hit any of your targets or any of your goals. If you're not doing the marketing that you say that you're going to be doing every day, then you're going to get inconsistent results. The biggest problem a lot of real estate agents do nowadays, especially listing agents, is they fill their listing pipeline with all these sellers. They bring these houses to market and then they get so busy that they don't do any marketing. And then they sell the houses and then they are like dead in the water. They don't have any other houses to sell. And they're just wondering, okay, why don't I have any other business? So I think it, the consistency is really the most important thing, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. And coming back, cause I, I really love this when, when I eat right and when I work out, it's like, everything is good with, with real estate market and ups and downs and basically falling contracts. How do you maintain your health while navigating the demands of a very fast paced market. Vodka. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think one of the things that's really super important is I would say to try to be as healthy as possible. I work out every single day, even on Sunday, I try to take Sundays off and then I end up going on an eight kilometer walk with my partner. So I guess I'm still working out. I alternate between swimming, which I'm, I love swimming and lifting weights. Uh, so I swim one day and lift weights and the next day. But I think it's really important that you have the physical workout. I think it's really important that you eat well. Uh, and I'm learn I'm still learning that myself. I'm working with a nutritionist and a functional medicine doctor out of San Francisco. I would say I'm vegetarian-ish, so I don't really eat a lot of meat. But I think the most important thing is to make sure that you're consistent about doing your workout and doing that first thing in the morning. Combine that with your meditation work. And that gives you the strength to me personally. It gives me the mental and the physical fortitude to get through the rest of the day. I love that. How can people find you and follow you, work out with you or work with you? And if they wanted to find that and to follow your socials, all of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Just hit on my, go to my website. So I have a free masterclass at my website and they can book a call with me. My website is www.theagentunleashed.com. That's theagentunleashed.com. Yeah. I really enjoyed this conversation, especially around the areas of mindset, fitness, wellness, nutrition, and how it corresponds to gains in your career. And thanks so much for coming on and for a great discussion. Yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot, Chris. Thank you so much.